This next video is about the Leopard 45. Leopard 45 is in competition with the Lagoons and the FPs for the mid-sized production Cataran market. Let's go and take a look at this amazing boat. So this is the helm of the Leopard 45 and uh, it's pretty windy up here. <laughs> Really good composition, feels very comfortable. Everything is here, is within reach. I've got all, all the lines lead back to the winches here. All your uh, equipment is right here. Obviously your helming position, your steering wheel, um, all your controls, everything. And the visib visibility is really good as well. Um, in terms of like how secure it is and how safe I would feel like on night watch by myself in the middle of the ocean, like the other kind of sports bridge situations, it is elevated, so it's not quite as safe as some of the other more enclosed homing positions. Um, and you would have to get a like an enclosure for the entire area um, and close that up so that you were enclosed and there was a barrier between you and the ocean so that there was um, a lesser chance of falling overboard. So good clear visibility and good helm controls and access to the lines from the cockpit. Well done, Leopard. I can stand on the... Uh, the bow, the port bow, or the port stern part. I can certainly, like, for watch keeping purposes, it looks really good fine. Elsewhere, the deck hatches are flush, there's no tripping hazard there. There are also grab rails across the whole length of the coach roof, including little things like this, stainless steel steps and attachment points. So well done Leopard, a nice safe boat here. We would like to see better access, however, to the life raft. It is stowed in a locker and not at the transom. So with that well-protected helm position and lots of attachment points, we are happy to give the Leopard a 7 out of 10. So let's start this assessment of build quality by getting into the engine bay as always. The steering mechanism is robust, there are rose joints and the rudder stock is supported and braced. An engine bay flange braced, tie rods, aluminium. Conduits aren't filled. Apart from that, it's all good. A lot of space there. The bulkheads, yep. Good access, steps, not bad, not bad. So with the exception of expanding foam in the conduits to reduce the chance of flooding in case of engine bay breach, we're happy with this. Other things like the davits were sturdy and well built and the gooseneck was oversized for the boat. To the forward facing cockpit which is now almost the signature feature of leopard catamarans. One of my initial concerns was on the robustness of this forward door but measuring it it is almost half an inch of polycarbonate or plexiglass. There is also some fairly sturdy handles and a good rubber gasket. I have no concerns over this door at all. Leopard's data suggests that the cockpit will clear of water in 45 seconds and there is also an optional cover to stop this from filling at all. We'll discuss this later in our closing notes. Interior cabinetry was of slightly above average quality and although the drawer inserts are white melamine and the catch is a little flimsy, I had no real problems with this. There were some areas for improvement, especially in areas like the corners of the joinery where it looked a little bit haphazard. However, overall above average. We found that although the cabinetry was slightly angular, the areas that would be prone to high wear were covered and protected by good edgings. So overall, we're gonna award this a six out of 10. The build quality is slightly above average here. The next category we're going to assess is interior design. This is a big category. We look at things like berth size, ventilation, accommodation, and comfort. Let's kick things off by looking at the cockpit. The cockpit is a well thought out area. It's got plenty of seating options for all of your guests. And as Nick demonstrates here, you've even got that adjustable backrest, which allows you to sit either looking forward or aft. 
as if you didn't have enough options in the main cockpit you of course have this forward facing cockpit the forward facing cockpit benefits from great ventilation as well as shade from that hardtop bimini going inside now you've got this forward facing nav station which is a really good feature of course forward facing nav stations are always handy you've also got a slightly different layout to what is trendier these days where you have a forward facing galley and then a saloon which i guess is towards the aft part of the boat now as you can see today was an extremely busy day and it was really difficult to get some clear shots of the interior of the boat but I think that just speaks to how popular the leopard boats are and for good reason as you can see the galley is a really great space as well it's got everything you need a three burner stove as well as loads of storage including plenty of cold storage options in terms of aesthetics it's not dissimilar to the interior Fontaine Pajot design with the light coloured veneer and the grey bench tops You've also got a load of storage as you can see, more storage than I think I could ever possibly need, but that really is appealing to liverboards. Not only is there plenty of cupboard and drawer space, but you've got loads and loads of space in the bilges as well. And then in the shower room, you have this really gorgeous light space with a huge shower area, separate closing door, which is nice and a little bit of ventilation as well. The berth is not an island berth, which is slightly unusual for this uh, type of catamaran, this production catamaran, but nonetheless, it's certainly large enough. While it's not a deal breaker, I would prefer an island bed. It's easy to get in and out of, and it's much easier to make every day. Okay, so the guest cabin uh, is exactly the same as the master cabin, as you would expect. Uh, again, the two opening hatches, which is uh, not bad, not as good as three. You get three in the lagoon and you get three in some other models as well, but two is good enough. And the bed is accessible just on the one side and not the other. But again, that's fairly standard in the catamaran. Hello. It's me. <laughs> Hi. What do you think? Yeah, now that we've got some peace and quiet, Christ, this is a popular boat, right? Yeah, look, for me... Stop the camera. Yeah, there's no need to come to you. These are nice, um, actually. These are, these are really nice. My take on this, I know we wouldn't, I know we said we wouldn't discuss aesthetics and it's not no, a component. Well, okay. It's very angular. And yeah. I don't believe this is real wood. Now that for me is a thing. Mm. Because you have to want to like the, you have to like the interior of the boat that you're buying. Yes. So, all I would say to you is that these hulls, and I'll, I'm gonna, we'll get all the stats on mm. width. Uh, this boat, this bed is considerably smaller than mm. the bed on the lagoon. Yeah. And as a result, because the hull is narrower. Yeah. But what you will notice that even on the smaller lagoon, there is double side access yeah, to the bed. Right. Exactly. Now that's a small thing for a lot of people, but it's a big thing for some people. Mm. Um, looking at this, the cabinetry in the joinery is not as good quality as the lagoon. And I, I'm not championing Lagoon, it's just the only, it's just the last brand we went on before this. Mm. So the, the joinery is not as good, mm. and I don't like the interior styling as much. All I would say though, in, I had some real questions over that front facing door, it mm. is well built. Yeah. So yeah. That, that has quelled that mm. question in my yeah. mind. I don't like the front facing cockpit, and really, this boat, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that um, you do have to, you know, want. You, you've got to live in it. Mm. And to me, it's too. It, it's too much like an IKEA boat. Although the joinery is, it's not. It's not poor quality. It's just. It's not. It's not, just the kind like of it. styling. The aesthetics. Yeah, the They're using like really light coloured. Yeah, plastic. Yeah. Okay, so as you can hear, it's not Nick's taste in terms of the, the aesthetics, but I actually don't mind it and I can see why this is such a popular boat. Anyway, on to the guest he heads, and I'm sorry about the focus here, it was a little bit dodgy. Plenty of room, as you can see, for your guests to shower and do their thing. So this is more like a wet room. There's an area for the shower but there's no separate cubicle as such. It's just this kind of little bit of plastic that will create a barrier, but nothing that will stop the entire room from getting wet. There's two opening hatches which will provide good ventilation. 
and a little bit of a little bit of storage under the sink. Overall, I liked the interior design i liked the layout a little bit different but still very functional and i'm going to give it a pretty good seven out of ten so let's look at some statistics for the leopard 45. the length of the beast is almost 14 meters that's 45 foot and at the waterline she is 30 meters so she is square at the bows 7.36 meters beam and 1.5 meters in draft. She has stub keels and because of those sail drives, she is unskegged. The main sail is 76 meters, the Genoa 46 meters, and she weighs 14 and a half tons. The lack of dagger boards mean that the boat is never going to point high and we couldn't find a polar diagram for the 45, so we're using the polar from the 46. So there's no data for pointing below 55 degrees, but off the wind, she should fly. So for performance, we are going to award the Leopard 45 a four out of 10. Again, no dagger boards and she's never going to perform upwind. Let's look at the value for money of the Leopard 45. The base price of this boat is 459,000 euros, 519,000 US dollars, 400,000 British pounds. However, fully specced add another 100,000 euros to that price. So we're looking at 630,000 US dollars or almost half a million British pounds. Please be aware that the base price does not include up to 20,000 euros of mandatory extras that are included in commissioning. Some of the extras seem slightly overpriced. We consider 5,000 euros plus tax for blinds and curtains to be over the top. You also need to consider that a gen set on this boat supplied and installed is 30,000 euros plus taxes. Overall value for money, we are gonna award the Leopard 45 a five out of 10. Well, that was the Leopard 45. It's a supremely popular boat uh, with charterers. Um, they have a whole thing with the moorings, the lepers going into moorings, fleets and buyback schemes. <clears throat> and it all feeds into a whole program. So very, very popular with charterers, very popular with uh, the lease companies, the leasing situation and uh, very popular with owners. Yeah, very popular with, with liverboard owners, definitely. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, we've met um, many uh, uh, liverboard couples, particularly uh, in, the, in the Bahamas, yep. who had leopards of various kind of iterations. And um, yeah, they're exceptionally popular boats. And I think that it's easy to see why, to yep, be honest. Absolutely. So let me go through the positives. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, it is a well thought out boat. It is very well thought out. I thought that looking at the build quality, the build quality is, is, is above average yeah. on this boat. There are lots of little touches that you can see, oh, that's clever, or that's useful, or that's logical. Handrails throughout. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of attachment points. There's a lot of stainless steel. There's a lot of grab rails. And you think, okay, well, that's, you know, you can move around the deck fairly safely, and yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. One bugbear that so far we have found with almost all of these catamarans is that the life raft position is not brilliant. I would always want a life raft on or near the transom. The best we've seen so far is Lagoon that actually have it in a, in a little... Like a dedicated box. In a box, but yeah. it's, it's, <clears throat> it slides out from the back of the transom. On the Leopard, I think as a standard, the one, the boat that we saw, it was inside a locker. Yeah. In the, in the cockpit, obviously, mm. but that is still a 60 kilogram lump that you yeah. may have to remove yourself or... We'll put it this way, I, I mean, maybe with, well, with, <clears throat> with, with adrenaline pumping through me, I might be able to manage it, but I definitely wouldn't rely on myself getting 60 kilos worth of life raft from the locker to the transom. The, the thing that I always talk about is, you know, you imagine that you know, a life raft is going to be deployed when, you know, the boat is sinking. But there are so many other situations when a boat, you may need to deploy your life raft. Absolutely. And if the boat were on fire, uh -huh. I mean, heaven bloody forbid, of course, but if the boat's on fire and, you know, engine fire that you can't suppress mm -hmm. and you need to get that out quickly, a lot of the time the fire is going to be in a situation where your life raft is. Well, I've read 
accounts, first-hand accounts of, and we've spoken actually to uh, people who we have met cruising who've experienced fires firsthand. Yes, absolutely. And um, the common thread on in, in any, any story about a fire on board is how quickly it takes hold. And on both accounts, both uh, the article that I read, which was written in, in first hand, and the oh. people that we spoke yeah, we met, to yeah, yeah, lost that, their boat. who lost their boat to a, a fire in the middle of the night, on neither occasion, and these are just two occasions that spring to mind, I'm sure there are many, many more, on neither occasion they actually had time to deploy the life raft, despite the fact that these were both monoholes and the life raft was, I think, on the transom for both yep. of them. Yep. Um, in both situations they actually ended up uh, going into the dinghy. The dinghy was already in the water, and they, in the both couples, it happened that they, they actually just jumped in the dinghy. Um, so luckily they had the dinghy already deployed. But yeah, the common theme is how it's, it, it's over in a flash. Before you know it, it's done. The yeah. fire has taken hold. And for us as offshore, this is, I mean, we are choosing mm -hmm. a boat uh, for offshore cruising. Yeah. I want a life raft deployable within 30 seconds. Absolutely. If you can't, that, that, and that to me is a red line. Yeah. If I cannot get a life raft deployed within 30 seconds of me needing it, yeah. it's a no-go. <laughs> it's almost That's pointless. It. <laughs> and so I understand, you know, if you're in coastal waters, if you're just sailing mm -hmm. the Abacos and you can swim ashore, then so be it. But to me, it's 30 seconds. Yeah. Or, or don't bother. Yeah. So again, with this, I mean, it, this is a fairly simple fix. It is a simple you fix. You put it in a cradle and you put the cradle on the transom mm -hmm. and it's done mm -hmm. so that can be done so yeah. that's the first thing so um and that so far we've seen in many many uh, of the catamarans we mm -hmm. reviewed mm -hmm. so that's the first thing um the other thing about life raft is because catamarans people worry about them inverting you have to be able to release the catamaran the, the life raft in both positions yeah yeah so it has to be kind of like you yeah. know it can't just be on a guard rail mm -hmm. but we'd have a hydrostatic release anyway yeah well. anyway so um but build quality generally this of the leopard you know good i yeah, enjoyed it yeah it is a little bit angular inside and let me just discuss the angular nature of it from an aesthetic point of view i don't like it but it's very difficult to discuss aesthetics when we're not it's not it's that's a personal preference yeah that's very very subjective and uh the, the problem with aesthetics is that it can the same kind of aesthetic style can work really well in one scenario or in one catamaran and then purely from a subjective point of view, it might work less well in a different yep. catamaran. So that kind of light coloured, very modern, um, angular, sharp corners, um, what is sometimes unkindly referred to as like the Ikea look, I don't think that that is actually very accurate, but that may be... I mentioned it in the video. Oh, did you? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, the, you know, kind of Scandinavian minimalist style I think that it can work really well and there are catamarans that we are reviewing that uh, we has that style in place and we love it. Yep. I think it, however, needs extremely, for me personally, it needs really high quality, a really high quality finish to, to look Pull off. Yeah, good. Absolutely. And if the finish is not of high quality, then it just looks a bit cheap. Yep. And I think that the finish in the um, in the leopards isn't bad by any stretch. No, it's not. It's, it's actually pretty good. And so it really comes down to whether or not you like that styling. Okay. And um, I did like it. I did like it. Um, I think it looked good. Whether I would prefer it over a more traditional style or something that was a little bit more, you know, of high quality, that is is uh, another discussion. But I, I, I liked it. The other thing is, okay, I, I would just want to get through the positives first. Yeah. Um, we look at Nikki and Jason's Leopard, which is a 2005 version, very different beast. Well, very different wood finish, mm -hmm. and I prefer that finish. But again, we're talking about subjective things. Yeah. Let me just go to another positive, which um, the front forward facing cockpit. Mm -hmm. Now, we, through various random events, ended up talking to um, the COO of Gumbo yeah. in a very drunken evening. <laughs> And um, he used to work for the Leopard, and he said, "There's nothing wrong with that forward-facing cockpit. Yeah, it, it works well." Yeah. I. The question I have is over the door. That door is—it's half an inch or almost half an inch of, uh, of like polycarbonate. It ain't going anywhere. No. It's a—it's a solid door. Yeah. So I don't have any problems with that, and it seems to have a really decent rubber gasket. So I don't have a problem with the, con the thought of it leaking. Yeah. I personally. For uh, an ocean-going vessel, I wouldn't want it. I don't want it. No. And this is 
my rationale. Firstly, putting all that fiberglass forward and making a cockpit and putting all that stuff, it puts the weight forward. Mm. It puts a lot of weight forward. Secondly, you do have to question how quickly that will drain. Now, um, I'm going to put a link down here to the statistics on dr the drainage of that boat. Apparently, the boat, that cockpit will drain in 45 seconds. Leopard also do a cover to go over it in case you're worried about it, but apparently no one's ever ordered it and they make claim to that in the, in the brochure. However, to me, that probably fulfills a legal loophole to get them around that. What do you mean? Well, basically, like, if, if, you, you know, if it's not draining, you say, well, you should have bought the cover. But that cover, from looking at it, obscures your forward-facing view. Mm. So I personally don't want a forward-facing cockpit. I just don't want it. I think it's too much windage. I think there's too much weight forward. And I think that that is not the most suitable thing for a, a, an ocean-going passage maker. Well, I think that the introduction of that forward-facing cockpit has really... Um, solidified where Leopard are targeting their market and their market is definitely the either charter market very much so uh, and or the liverboard market who are not looking to do any kind of long distance yep. um, or particularly rough weather sailing they're looking to sail in the Bahamas or the Caribbean I have to say I've not seen many leopards in, in Europe, um, so I think we saw many in the Caribbean and in the Bahamas. Um, and you know, there's why not? I mean, when you're selling between islands and you're not doing anything that is particularly... Uh, when you can pick your weather windows. Absolutely, when you can pick your weather windows, even if you're doing a few days offshore, that's not a problem. You yep. pick a great, nice weather window. And why not have that forward-facing cock pivot in the evenings when you want to, you know, watch the sun go down from that vantage point or have, you know, that's where you get all your nice breeze and, I mean, why not? It, it, no, it's perfect. It's it, perfect. If you're, anchor, you're anchor. If you're yeah. anchor. And the other thing is by opening that big door, you've got a, you know, Absolutely. crazy ventilation. Yeah. Look, it's one of these things. That boat to me, although uh, you you can have the delivery done by by sea mm -hmm. and they come from South Africa to America so they do they can do ocean passages. Of course they can. They, you know they're very able to do ocean passages. Yes. I just I wouldn't want to do one. Well yeah they're and not designed for that purpose. Then, although they're category A rated. Yeah. But in the same way that you can do the Indy 500 like on a scooter. Yeah. You know it will go around the track exactly. but it, it's not going to compete. You can cross an ocean on anything that floats <laughs> really as exactly. long as it continues to float. But let me just you know continue with the, the quasi yeah. positives now. Anyway. Um, I thought the build quality was above average. I think that while the certain parts of the joinery were lacking, it was it looks well put together. It does, yeah. And I thought that you know overall, if you like that kind of the fake wood, the very light wood, I think it's a nice boat. Well designed, but well sturdy. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Negatives. Any for you? Um, I don't think there were any major negatives. The my. Um my main issue with the leopard is the forward facing cockpit yep because i just a it's not necessary because if you want to sit forward as we did on for example nicky and jason's boat you know you get out your your seats and you set them yep. out on your trampoline or on, on the kind of hard um uh i don't know forward section of the boat and it's beautiful there's no you don't have to have a, an actual cockpit to, in order to enjoy sitting out on the trampolines or on the, at the front of the boat so that's unnecessary to me and I, yeah, so for that reason I'm just not a fan of it. The forward cockpit also gives a lot of shade because there's a big kind of overhang. Mm. Um, let me just go back to one positive that I just, it, it's not actually at the boat, it's about the, 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 the actual website for Leopard. One thing that I did notice and it's very easy to find with Leopard is that you can spec your own boat. Now I'm going to talk about this as a negative but also as a positive. The value for money of this boat, the basic specification for the Leopard 45 is actually, there's a lot of things that they're included that you won't find in lots of other boats like hot and cold water, the hard uh, dodger above the um, helm station, that's included in the yeah. price. So there's a lot of things that are included mm -hmm. and if you go to the Leopard website it's very very easy to spec the boat, mm. it really is. And so you can see what everything costs. So what, there's transparency. Yeah, complete yeah. transparency. There are some things that are I believe just it's just crazy prices like crazy prices stuff like the price and I think we've gone through this we went through this with the Fontaine Pajot Estrella in the last video the cost for curtains the cost for curtains in this boat is outrageous outrageous mm. it's curtains 
And you just think, you, well, they're obviously there's a markup to try and push the boat across the line. That's the mm. first thing. Second thing is, that, you know, things that we always look at, the cost of a gen set, the cost of um, air conditioning. Mm. For air conditioning for us isn't a must, but a gen set, because it's a kind of standard, mm. 30,000 euros um, plus tax for a gen set. And we know for a fact that that gen set is a, an eight to 10,000 euro piece of kit if you buy yeah, it yeah so they're charging twenty thousand to install that and put the piping in and you're like well it's a couple of skin fittings yeah but that's where the, the profits lie absolutely they mark up the extras and that's where their profits lie the third thing about the pricing of this and it's not just leopard it's across the board mm. is that they give you a price but the price is not the price yeah and whereas i understand that you can spec a boat and you should say okay well you know I want the boat out of the factory, I don't want anything else, like nothing, just zero, and do every single thing myself. You can't do that with no. Leopard, because there are two or three costs, commissioning and other things, which add twenty to 30,000 to the price. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's, 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 almost, it's, it's a lie. That's not what the price is, because mm. you can't get the boat for that price. I understand you can get the boat for that price and then put, you know other things on it like you know the curtains and your bedding and all that sort of stuff and you know the generator mm. but you cannot buy the boat for that price and you are allowed to exclude certain mandatory items in the pricing which i believe is is slightly unfair mm. you know it's like going for dinner and then you know you're ordering fish and chips and they're going well actually the chips aren't included in that you know that's kind of quite <laughs> But it, you know, you can't not have it. It's a yeah, ma they're yeah. mandatory items yeah. that you have to have. So, um, what else about that? Le about the leopard? Um, slightly um, pointy corners, slightly angular. Mm. Um, again, just to the point of your safety. Yeah, not ideal. No, not ideal. Mm. But overall, I think it's a good boat. I think it's a great boat for living at anchor. I, I, th I think that's a slightly once again to downwards faint praise. I not at all. We spend about ninety percent of our time not under sail, so you know you. Absolutely. No. If you, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So at anchor, but coastal cruising. Yeah. Or a couple of days offshore. Yeah. Absolutely fine. Where you can pick mm. a three to. I mean, nowadays you can get a three to five day weather window with absolutely no problems. Mm. You know, especially if you're in the right season. If you're in the mm. shoulder season, things can get a bit a bit dicey. But mm. three to five day weather window, and you're away. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, it's testament to Leopard that there are so many of them still about. I mean, it's just, I, I, you probably, you've been doing all the research, so you would know better than I, but I, I, my understanding is that the Leopard 48, which we haven't reviewed, and the Leopard 50, which again, we haven't reviewed, because they weren't available to, to see at the boat show, are some of the most popular catamarans Absolutely. on the market at the Absolutely. moment. They're exceptionally popular and with, uh, for livable cruisers, not just for the charter market. So you get a lot of boat for your money. You get a lot of boat for your money. The used market is huge as mm -hmm. well. So there's a lot, <clears throat> there's a huge scope to, to get a good boat, whether you're in the used market. Yeah. And as I said, Nicky and Jason's boat, you know, th that's a good boat. Yeah. That's a really good boat. I think, put it this way, uh, for me, if Leopard, I mean, quite so well asking, the, the wish list is huge. <laughs> if they put different wood options in, mm. if they had an option where you could ditch that forward cockpit mm. and just change it can change it a little bit yeah just have like you know more yeah standard standard yeah. like the old style yeah and don't forget nikki and jason spoke they have um shaft drives on that yeah boat. well most <clears throat> that, that I, I wouldn't even think to put that on a wish list these days because the cell drives are very quickly I know, becoming the norm I know. but you know to a leopard with shaft drives you know that's a good boat anyway but Going back to the 45, the 2019 45, mm. a good boat. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do ocean crossings in it. You can do ocean crossings in it. I personally would want something without the forward facing cockpit. Mm. And from a liverboard perspective, minor niggles like the seats, the cushions aren't very comfortable. Yeah. Those are minor things. Yeah. Um, they're hard. And there's, a, you know, when you're sat on the lounge cushions, we sat on our, our friend's cushions on a 48. There's not really enough space to put your backside. Yeah, they're a strange <clears throat> shape. They are a strange shape. Yeah. Minor niggles, and again, it really just does come down to the the aesthetic of it more than anything else. Yeah. So if, as we're not judging personal aesthetic, it's a good boat. Yeah, it is, and they're they're very popular for a very good reason. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's good. So listen, thank you very much for watching that. That is the Leopard 45. We are going to put out another video by request at some point once we've got through a few more of these. Just comparing and contrasting like various, um, like for instance, we're going to do something comparing the Lagoons, the Leopards, 
um, the Fontaine Pajos and the Naughty Tech all in one to kind of put the stats together. It's going to be very statistic heavy, that one, and a lot of graphs. For, for the, those of you who are a bit nerdy about this, that's where we're going to go with that. Um, in addition to that, we've got reviews coming up. We've got the Uchimo 51, we've got the Naughty Techs to do, we have, I think we've got a Katana to do. Yeah, we've got a Privilege. A Privilege, and loads more. And as I said, we have got more from the Gra La Grande Motte, but we're also going to be at Annapolis this year. And at that boat show, we are going to go and see a lot of the boats that we were unable to to catch uh, that weren't being shown at the Grand Motte. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching. Um, we will be back soon with another video. So goodbye.